Okay, so in this video, I'll teach you how to uh, get access to parameters and the stack. All right, so now that we got the basics out of the way, um, let's actually do something. Um, as you can see here, I have the function from the previous video with two i32 parameters and a return type of i32, just wrapped around a module. So in the previous video, I mentioned that this was a nameless function and that I was also not naming the parameters. So just to show you, I'm going to name one of these parameters so you can know the syntax, which is dollar sign, and I'm going to name it p1. Okay, so supposing this is parameter 0, this is parameter 1, p1. And yeah, let's get access uh, to these parameters. The way that you do that in, in WebAssembly is through the keyword local.get. And there's two ways to access these parameters either by index or by name. And it might seem a bit odd to talk about index in terms of trees, but just imagine that you get, you're talking about each local subtree. So in this case, I mean that the root will be function. So as in the main root of the tree is module, and then lower you have function. But what I mean is we're just talking about the subtree, okay? So we're not including module in this index count. Uh, you can kind of think as an, an index, a scope of indexes. So pretty much what you'll have is you'll have index for the children of this root, which in this case is this nameless function. And starting from the left to the right from zero to say n. Okay, so this can be accessed by the index zero and this could be accessed by the index of 1. But as we named it, I'm just going to access it by its name. So I can say local.get p1. And to show you kind of what's happening behind the scenes with this local.get, I will introduce you to the stack. A good way to understand the stack is to think of it as a stack of plates, and where the plates are actually variables. And I say plates because if you think about it, when you add the first plate to the stack and then you add another one right on top, you have to remove the top one before you can remove the bottom plate. And so that's how operations are performed in the stack. It's a last in is the first one out kind of data structure. Okay, and so you can better understand and visualize the stack. I've drawn a couple of little stacks that you can see right here. So 4 stands for the line number that we're currently at. And as you can see, in 4 we don't have anything. It's just a function signature. The stack is completely empty. But now moving to line 5, we have local.get0. So what's going to happen is we're going to add whatever local.get0 is to the stack. Um, now moving forward to line 6, we already have 0, and we're going to add p1 to the stack. OK? Now, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's perform an operation and actually have a return type for this function. And skip things simple, I'm just going to do an i32.add. What this is doing is it's going to remove the last two elements, so the top two elements of the stack, add them, and add to the stack the result, okay? So, uh, and there's a bunch of other operations you can perform. I'm going to add a link uh, in the description of this video showing other operations. Okay, right here I'm just doing an i32.add. So, as I mentioned, it's going to get p1, it's going to get 0, it's going to remove them from the stack, and it's going to then add to the stack their addition. So p1 plus the zero index element. Okay, so that's um, basics of the stack. 